Hello! In our first video, we got a grasp of just how small the scale of nanoscience is. Now, we're going to examine what nanoparticles you're being exposed to every day. So let's take a look at what nanoparticles can be found in almost every home, dorm, or apartment. There are single-walled carbon nanotubes, multi-walled carbon nanotubes, titanium dioxide, silver nanoparticles, silicon, silicon dioxide, magnesium oxide, aluminum oxide, graphite, gold, zinc oxide, to mention a few. But realistically, this list doesn't even graze the surface of the naturally occurring chemicals and the manufactured ones that find their way into your food and your drinking water, as well as the shirts you wear and the tools you use. But for the sake of preserving your already strained attention, let's focus on the big three that are with you in whatever room you're in right now. Titanium dioxide, silver nanoparticles, and carbon nanotubes. So let's go through them. Titanium dioxide is often used as a pigment and is highly reflective. Many times it is known as titanium white and presents as a white powder. Looking around your home, you'd find titanium dioxide here and often here in the forms of paints and sunscreens. Paints are made brighter and more resistant to aging due to the reflective qualities of titanium dioxide, where sunscreens are made more effective by that same reflective property, blocking UV radiation more effectively without leaving the skin with a pasty white covering. All right, now on to the second one, silver nanoparticles. Silver nanoparticles are most commonly used in consumer products to enhance their antibacterial qualities. The science works like this. Consider this piece of blue fabric. Along come bacteria, and whether through dirt or sweat or moisture, they attach themselves to the fabric. It then is allowed to multiply, and the fabric begins to smell. But now consider the same situation, but treat the blue fabric with silver nanoparticles. Again the bacteria arrives, and again the bacteria attaches itself to the fabric, but in this case, silver nanoparticles release silver ions, and the bacteria absorbs them. Then the bacteria is broken down from the inside by the ions, and the fabric remains clean. Smellless. Silver nanoparticles are being used more and more in bed sheets, clothing, and athletic socks, also cookware, which, by resisting the bacteria, can allow food to stay fresh longer. Alright, now on to the last of the three, and the one around which most of the big advances in the field of nanoscience are focused. Carbon nanotubes. Carbon nanotubes are formed from one atom thick sheets of carbon called graphene rolled into cylinders. Those cylinders present in two distinct ways, either as multi-walled or single-walled carbon nanotubes, and have a diameter of a few nanometers, with a length that can be hundreds of thousands of times longer. In fact, the world record length for a carbon nanotube was half a meter, which is 500 million times larger than its diameter. Nanotubes are making waves in the world of engineering due to some of their shocking properties. Consider the tensile strength. Steel, measuring in at 1 gigapascal, is strong enough to hold suspension bridges and is used to design vehicle chassis. Diamond, commonly known to be one of the strongest materials on Earth, outpaces steel drastically, but carbon nanotubes, measuring in at 150 gigapascals, leave even diamond behind. That would help to explain why carbon nanotubes are currently being used to build lighter and stronger synthetic materials for things like tennis rackets and bicycles and why, in the not-too-distant future, you may begin to see the materials we use for the roads drastically shift towards nanotubes, which, among other things, will help prevent cracking. Think we're done with the fantastic properties of carbon nanotubes? Think again. Water treatment plants are considering using carbon nanotubes as adsorbents. Here's how it works. Here we are in untreated water filled with natural organic contaminants. We don't want to drink these contaminants, so we insert carbon nanotubes. When natural organic materials interact with activated carbon, they bind to it in a process called adsorption. We then filter out the now much larger bound particles that otherwise would have been too small to grab, and voila! You now have clean drinking water. As you can see, carbon nanotubes have tons of remarkable qualities and uses. But perhaps the most impressive thing about them is that, in labs across the country, we are still discovering more. From sunscreen to solar panels, from socks to airplanes, nanoscience is drastically changing the things that we use every single day. And understanding these nanoparticles may well help change the way that we view the world we live in, and the ways that we can manipulate it to make our lives better.